And here we go. This time uh, we are going to be inspecting the drums object in Audio Mulch. Uh, drums is a little uh, drum sequencer that comes with mulch and uh, is fun to screw around with uh, in a big way. So let's uh, go ahead and put one in our project. Drums under signal generators. And let's route its mono output to our main out. And they take the mono signal and send it to both sides. We're going to bring up the volume for the main, and we're going to bring up the volume for each of the five uh, drum channels that exist. Um, we can see each of these channels here. Uh, they're laid out in this way. Um, they're uh, individual channel mutes. That's what these checkboxes are. And then there's also gating for uh, channel one and two. This is a common uh, type. Uh, uh, you will see this kind of feature with uh, drum sequencers where um, the uh, the notes that are sounded or the samples that are played back on channel one and two serve as a gate for uh, the rest of the drum tracks, thereby sort of, um, oh, I don't know how to describe it, sort of cleaning up um, the rhythm a little bit um, tends to uh, lead to a more techno-y flavor. Um, here is where we actually do sample assignment. We um, click here, and we'll just go put a kick in there. And we'll lay one down in front of each, on each beat here. And then when we hit au play on audio mulch, there we have our kick. And while that loops, I'll put some other stuff in there. And throw a snare in. Now we're getting toward a beat. And of course, there's nothing in the world that says that we are stuck having to playback drum samples in the drums object in Audio Mulch. So let's do exactly not that. And instead throw in maybe... Mm, depends what we got here. I'm just doing a random dive into a sample uh, library directory here. Let's see what that is. kind of groaning back there. A little goofy, frankly. Let's see what other bass notes we have. Perhaps we can... Place some of the uh, old notes with new notes. Okay, now in this way we've got a little uh, drum and bass type thing happening here. And of course we can reframe, and when I say drum and bass, I don't mean drum and apostrophe bass. I mean, you know, some, we're playing some drum samples and some bass samples back. Let's uh, hit reframe. We hear the loop starting to trigger from a different place. Of course, with nothing playing against it, it's kind of tough to uh, see any difference. So let's go and store this. It's very easy to do in audio mulch. And then let's uh, just go nuts and throw in completely different data, semi-randomly. that. Oops. And 
now that's number two, and we can switch between uh, patch number one and patch or state number one and state number two. Pretty herky jerky, and frankly, not terribly musically useful. Let's try reframing uh, patch two here. Putting the kicks back on the ones. I think putting the kicks back on the ones tends to help that out. So let's go back and store, restore, that is to say, or store again, number two. And then shift between one and two. Still a little crazy, but we can sculpt away some of those snares. Put those snares in different spots. And so just by uh, uh, entering data in uh, this uh, grid here, in drums, you end up with a fairly powerful way to get to a hook of some kind uh, within uh, various, you know, genres of electronic music. Um, this is one of the things that Audio Mulch is just great at. It exposes all these controls for you and gives you the ability to uh, get at a collection of simple, um, simple uh, sound sources, but these simple sound sources are collected and arranged and presented in, uh, in a way that allows you to uh, get fairly complex with them and very, very flexible. I love audio mulch and I love talking about it. I'm glad uh, you watched this video. Watch GearWire.com in the future for more uh, screencast videos about the great audio mulch. Thanks a lot. I'm Rob Wormowski for GearWire.com.